Ah. All the foam. I had too much foam. I don't know why I had I, so uh, much foam. I lost my cap. Not your cap. Those will be precious resources in the coming apocalypse. Bounced somewhere under my, uh, somewhere behind my computer. Welcome to A Drink to the Past, the podcast guaranteed to have a weird, awkward opening that's slightly more differently weird and awkward every time. I'm your host, John Michael Patrick Thompson, and this is my co-host, uh, Chris, is actually living inside this Minecraft world on it. Uh, Chris is actually living inside this Minecraft world on it. Yes. Uh, that's why he doesn't have a face, except for the Memento Mori here. Uh, yeah. Today's beer of the week is Agro Light in my, one of my new koozies. It says Grill Sergeant, get it? Uh, so, you actually get to see this lovely koozie if you're watching our YouTube version. If not, we still love you, Podbean and Apple subscribers. So be sure to like and share and subscribe and leave a review on Apple and all that good stuff. Sean loves you. I've never met you. Yeah. I mean, I might not have met you either, but I still love you. I'm kinky like that. Weird. All right. Chris, what you drinking? Uh, I'm, I've been drinking this quite a bit recently. Peach Stand Rambler. Nice. Still just as good as always? Yeah. It's a good summer beer, and since summer is getting closer and closer to ending. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I best drink it now. Went into work for the first time in like a long time today, so I know summer is ending because I work for a school system. So that's that's how that works. All right. Um. So shall we get into what you're playing? Sure. All right, Chris. What you playing? Uh, I'm playing Minecraft. Well, yeah, Minecraft, obviously. Yeah, uh, I've also been playing that. a lot of uh, <laughs> Age of Empires too. Mm-hmm. Which I believe I covered last week, and I've been playing a lot of Dota 2, uh, which is actually quite a bit of fun. Is it better than League of Legends? Uh, let's see. Are you gonna be that hipster that's like, yeah, Dota's better? I mean, it's not really a hipster game at this point. I, at this point, I want to support League of Legends anymore since they're 100% owned by Tencent. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Tencent's investment in Valve and by extension Dota 2 is considerably less. Yeah. But I'm uh, not really a big fan of MOBA games in general. It's not my thing. Like, I've, I've played League of Legends. I've played a couple of, like, uh, homebrew World of. or not World of Warcraft, but like Warcraft 3 kind of games that are supposed to be MOBAs, and I'm just like, eh, I don't get it. Not my thing. Well, that's fair. It's yeah. not really to everybody's Dota, test. So, I don't know. Uh, if you didn't like those games, I think you'd like Dota even less. Mm-hmm. Fooey. All right. Uh, I've been playing um, Hellblade. Uh, I finished that. Uh, I, I was talking last week about how it kicked my graphics card in the nuts, um, which um, luckily I, I figured out, okay, I'll try it one more time and, and see how it goes. And it, it actually worked okay, I got through the final boss fight. For some reason, it, it didn't spawn one of the bosses in the final boss fight, so I don't know what that was about, but because there was less bosses to load, it was less intensive on my graphics card. I'm pretty sure it was the deciding factor of why my uh, graphics card didn't hate it this time. So. Damn it, kerplowed. Yeah, so... Um, that was really just a phenomenal experience overall. It's, uh, like, I can't believe that people don't talk about this game more. This game is absolutely incredible, one of a kind in so many ways. Um, it's absolutely worth playing, um, especially if you want to, you know, try it on Xbox Game Pass for only a dollar. Uh, I'd like to say Xbox is our sponsor for this video, but they're not. But they could yeah. be. If anybody at Xbox is listening, we would take money from you and then plug your shit. They don't want to pay us. Have you heard what we say? <laughs> like, I pay us money. I don't know. I don't listen to us. I just, Fair enough. I just come on and talk and drink, and it and it works out okay. 
Yeah, so does often work out this okay. This aggro light is like supposed to be a low cal IPA. I so it's zero grams of fat, two grams of protein. There's protein in beer. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah, that's a surprise to me too. Kind of ends up in the end. This is a ska brewing. I've I've never really had anything from ska that I've loved. I've had, like, they don't make anything terrible that I've ever had, but this is probably the worst ska beer I've ever had. It's just so plain. It's, like, very much like a plain-ass, like, American lager. Um, That's weird. Which is not my thing, which if you, if you follow me on the podcast, you'll know I'm, I'm not big into a lot of light beers, especially not, like, flavorless lagers and and supposed to be an IPA. I'm not getting any IPA characteristics at all. Um, I've been quite too sure why the lager caught on the way it did. Yeah, I don't know. The ales are so much better. <laughs> like, all uh, of the time. Yeah. <laughs> but, you uh, and I are in agreement. Yeah, this is... Like, it's just such a blah beer. It's like... Tastes like water and malt. Yeah. Uh, I give it a four. I myself also had my keyboard break. Uh, mm -hmm. Not too long ago, so I've got a new mechanical keyboard now. Ooh, so if you hear any clicking in the background, click, click, click. click. And you hear that? Mm -hmm. The good fine click of a real mechanical keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. That's what um, that is. Yeah, and anyways, other than that, I've uh, also been getting back to a little bit of uh, Path of Radiance, uh, which has been a fun kind of thing to revisit. Because um, it's been quite a long time since I played it. Like, the last time I played it, it was the current Fire Emblem game. It is how long... And this is a, this is a 2005 game. So... Um, definitely been an interesting thing to go back to because I remember just being mind blown at the graphics at the time and now I'm just like this is aged <laughs> a lot it's like some of it's so cheesy looking by today's standards and none of it is like awful but it's it's aged <laughs> so uh, but it's been a lot of fun the level design is still really cool um, as compared to, like, modern Fire Emblem games, I feel like it's way better than everything Three Houses did in level design. The levels just wow. seem a lot more interesting. One of my biggest problems with Three Houses is literally, I think there's maybe one or two missions where your objective is to kill the boss and every other mission is a route mission where you just have to kill every enemy on screen and not that there's anything wrong with those missions they have their place but through um one of the things i loved about older fire emblem games is they'd put in different things like you have to seize this uh command post of their you know you have to like take over their base basically or you have to like uh just defend and keep your troops alive for eight or ten turns before reinforcements arrive and stuff like this and these kind of different objectives really make the gameplay feel more diverse because especially with the missing weapon triangle in three houses it just felt so much like um the gameplay was the same all the time uh you know you like you just put in your big units in the front and your little units in the back that shoot magic or, or bows and arrows and as long as you aren't totally stupid you win uh in three houses it's another one of my gripes is like this this series used to be hard and three houses was like not even trying to be hard it like gives you so many like the the level design is so easy and then on top of that you like have all of these extra things to make it even easier like you can turn back time like seven times per mission if you do randomly like stop paying attention for a second and like put your uh 
archer it's a turn based strategy game. Right, yeah, it's like like I'm like, I like the idea of maybe a one turn take back or something every now and then. That's that's not absurd. But like you can like every time you use this, I think you can turn back up to five turns or something, and you can use it seven times per mission. It's just like how can you not win <laughs> under these circumstances? Uh and it it just feels like Everything is more pressing in this game, especially with the permadeath thing. Because, like, I think I played with permadeath on, but I didn't even care. And you can turn permadeath off in, in some of the newer ones. And I get that for an accessibility thing, you know. Not everybody yeah. is going to want to play permadeath. Sure, it's, it's fine. Whatever. But, like, uh, at that point, I'm also, like, if you don't play with permadeath and you're playing with, you know these settings again like how do you not win you can just be like as aggressive as you want to and i feel like you'll never have any major issues you'll just like walk all over everything it's weird anyways uh that game is still great um so it it feels a little bit different from when i played it beforehand because i i feel like uh Maybe I was just not as good at gaming or something, because I feel like a lot of these things that I used to do would, like, take, um, I feel like they took more time. Like, I, I, I have this kind of memory of this part where you're kind of trekking through the jungle, uh, trying to get to your next objective, and I feel like that segment lasted, like, a, a long time in the original, but... Uh, it's like one mission. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? This is so weird. So, I think time feels different when you're a kid, too. That's possible, yeah. It pat seems to pass at a different rate. Mm -hmm. Also started uh, the messenger. Ooh. Which is kind of interesting. Uh, if you remember, uh, Chris and me were kind of plugging the uh, Sea of Stars back a little while ago. Uh, so, The Messenger is their the first game by Sabotage Studios, I believe. It's their only game, right? And then Sea of yeah, Stars that's... will be their second game. So, um, yeah, I was like kind of interested to check it out anyways. And then I saw it was on the Xbox Game Pass. And Nick appears. Poof. A wild Nick. Again. A wild are you tame? I'm fresh. Are you so fresh? Uh, you can suck your nuts. If you'd like to. Well, thank you. Oh, shit. What's this long house? This would just be my attempt at making a Viking long house, which I'm still trying to figure out the aesthetics of. Nice. So, Nick, what you playing? As long as you're on the podcast. Well, I was actually earlier, I hopped on World of Warcraft to do some like rudimentary bullshit and my guild's like, hey, Kimo, you want to raid? And I was like, I'm at work right now and I'd have to go like randomly, but if you're okay with that, then sure. And they're like, fuck, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so it was, it was freaking silly. I was juggling my job and like a high end raid and ugh. Nice. eventually they had to kick me. <laughs> You're like, you're not pulling enough DPS. You're like, I'm the healer. Well, it's more like, you're going AFK too much because, yeah, you have work. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> this was silly from the start. My uh, brother Dan got kicked from a raid once back when we were raiding in Wrath of the Lich King. Because uh, somebody put up the recount data and it's like, oh, look at these numbers. And uh, this paladin, Rizia, is only pulling like 2k DPS. It's like, everybody needs to pull... 8k or more this is unacceptable and they kicked him and uh he's like in the ventrilo chat with everybody because ventrilo was the thing back then and he's just here's like who the fuck just kicked the healer <laughs> it's because he's pulling 2k dps while healing <laughs> it's like uh guys <laughs> he's just like nope i'm done with you i was idiots. waiting for that i was fucking waiting for that yeah <laughs> 
Yeah. You kicked the fucking healer. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh. Alright, shall we get into the news and booze? In, yes. Which means yes. that, Nick, you have to tell us what kind of booze you're drinking. Oh no. Um, so I have these little chocolate shooters right. that we got in this weird wooden crate. It's like a mix pack. Uh, they're nice dangerous. and chocolatey. <laughs> they're not dangerous at all, oh. actually. Like we did the, I think we did math once, maybe. Hmm. But it was like you have to take like twenty six of them to actually get drunk. Hmm. But by then you'll probably have a heart attack from the sugar intake, so it won't even matter. Challenge accepted. I know. I like heart attacks. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do it, Sean. I like you being alive. <laughs> I only like heart attacks when they come on a bun with a fried egg on top. Oh. 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 All right. So, anyways, uh, let's get into the news and booze. So, uh, Halo Infinite has been delayed till 2021, uh, which kind of goes with the next piece of news. Which So, I'll kind of bundle these into one that uh, Xbox Series X launch window has been updated to November. So, uh, it is still planning to come out this year, but its flagship title is non existent. Like, how do you launch Xbox without Halo? Like, what else are people going to buy? What has anyone ever bought on an Xbox? Halo. Besides Halo. <laughs> Gears of War. They've got Gears Tactics is coming out, I think, for it. But that's, like, not the same as Gears of War. I feel like that's a totally different market than the standard Gears of War fan base. Uh, not to say that there's anything, like, wrong with Gears Tactics, but it's certainly going to attract a different crowd, I think. Is Gears Tactics, like, a more strategic version of Gears? Yeah, it's like a tactics game instead of a Gears of Wars game. I think it's an RTS. Um, I'd have to look that up to be sure. But, huh. yeah, it's like... Um, I feel like they're going to have, like, not a very good uh, launch window until Halo comes out. And at that point, I'm like... It almost seems it's like it's a weird scenario anyway, because like literally if you just wanted to play Halo, you could also like most of the big Halo fans are probably already owning an Xbox One and it's coming to that as well. And it sounds like it's coming to PC at the same time via Xbox Game Pass. So as far as I can tell, like it sounds like this is just gonna Silly. yeah it's like this is super weird uh so i'm sorry i missed this so you're saying a new whole new system's coming out and the x bone is already outdated yeah um but at the same time like if you just wanted to play halo which i feel like is the big draw of any xbox system you, you could buy on an xbox. xbox one for way cheaper interesting so I, I feel like that's also gonna play out interestingly as we go here. I don't know what all's going to happen as we're going, but uh, yeah, it's just a weird kind of scenario. What do you guys think about that? Uh, just remembering what happened with uh, Twilight Princess. Right. What happened with Twilight Princess? With the uh, them saying, oh, it's a Wii game. It'll be coming, or it's a it's a GameCube game. It'll be coming out on GameCube. That was our priority, and then them delaying it for GameCube because they wanted it to come out on Wii. Yeah, um, I feel like it's a little bit different because, like, this was kind of planned internally as a multi-platform game for Xbox Series X as well as Xbox One. Uh, from an earlier stage of development is what it sounds like to me. Uh, I could be wrong on that. But also, the Twilight Princess was ready on launch day for Wii. And this isn't coming for several months until after Xbox Series X is launched. So... Hmm. So... It's not exactly a console move for that. Yeah... I, I mean, I feel like if any game will be, it'll still be Halo, 
but I feel like the timing is just super weird, and it's going to have a really weird kind of life cycle because of that, because it's launching basically with no major system sellers. It's like... I don't know what to think of this. I think it's good for Halo. Uh, I think it, what it sounds like and what a lot of people are kind of alleging is that uh, they kind of heard the backlash because a lot of people were not very thrilled with the graphics of uh, Halo Infinite. Um, and so they're theoretically like going back to fix the graphics, make it look more like a next-gen game. Um, but... I mean, sure, that, that'll be fine for Halo, but in the long run, I'm like, will it be okay for Xbox? I don't know. But Microsoft lately has been monetizing so differently with the Game Pass and coming out with the streaming service with xCloud that I'm like, will it matter that they have a really crappy launch? I don't know. Hmm. What other news are we looking at? All right, so well, our next piece of news and biz is uh, Samurai Jack Battle Through Time is getting a physical release on Switch and PS4. Um, so the collector's edition is probably already sold out, but you can go check. I think there's 2,000 for Switch and 2,000 for PS4. Uh, if you go on uh, Limited Run Games right now, they might have them, but probably not. Um, but also, uh, you can order the regular version uh, physical for either console uh, until September 13th. So that's cool. Um, I'm really excited about this game. Either of you are big Samurai Jack peoples? Uh, I was a big fan as a kid, but I never picked it up again after mm -hmm. the reboot. Not not out of any disinterest, mind you, just that right. uh, I never... Uh, I never really got back into it, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think that was one of the last shows that I watched, like, as it aired, before I just quit cable, <laughs> was the final season of Samurai Jack, and I, I really loved the final season, um, and I'm super excited about this game. As a longtime Samurai Jack kind of guy, I'm like, it looks super sweet, uh, which is funny, because I'm, like, listening to some other people, like, don't seem to think it looks all that great but i feel like the biggest difference is like if you liked samurai jack back in the day versus not then uh like like if you were a fan of the show back in the day then you think this game looks pretty sweet and if not then you're like hey, it's another hack and slash beat em up something something i think it looks cool so there all right um nick anything to say on samurai jack I got nothing. All right. Uh, then we'll go to an interesting kind of a convoluted story here. This is our biggest story. So um, Fortnite was pulled from the Apple App Store after they changed the game to... they, they uh, Basically, uh, Apple makes you, if you have in-game payments, you have to set it up so that they pay through Apple through the App Store, and therefore Apple gets a 30% cut. Um, which they left intact, but they also added the option of paying through a different means, through basically directly to Epic, uh, and that violated the terms of service according to Apple, so Apple pulled Fortnite from the App Store, and it is no longer available on, like, if you still have it downloaded, you can play it, but since it's pulled, you'll never be able to update it after the season ends or whatever if you're a big Fortnite player on Apple. Why would you even download that on the App Store to begin with? I don't understand people who buy Fortnite, but <laughs> like at all. Well, I mean, like, it's not an Apple platform, right? Right, but in order to... The, the only way to get it on iPhone or on any iOS device is through the uh, Apple App Store. So if you're playing on an iPad... All those kids playing that at school are going to be upset. Yeah, which is... Uh, that that kind of backlash hasn't even hit yet. I'm sure it's, like, going to come, but uh, it hasn't yet. So. Just Apple being assholes. Right, yeah. What else is new? Um, but at the same time... that So in, in response to this, uh, Epic Games is now suing Apple 
uh, claiming that they are creating a monopoly by making all developers use their payment service. Um, and shortly after, they, uh, they were also removed from Google Play for the same reason. Now, you can still get it on Android because it's available through third-party means on Android, um, but you can't get it through Google Play anymore, which is obviously the biggest Android app kind of place to go for apps. Right, um, but at least they allow you to have other third-party apps on there. Yeah, which is one of the big advantages of Android versus Apple. We could we could go down that rabbit hole another time. Um, but uh, what do you think about this? Uh, is Apple like like it's douchey, and it's certainly a big cut to like indie developers to take thirty percent of all their profits from literally all that their game makes. Thirty percent of it goes to Apple, um, and that's a little bit what Epic's case is kind of built around. Because Epic themselves, like they. They can take the 30%. They make so much money off of Fortnite. Um, so, um, what do you think? Uh, is, is there a correct side to take in this weird kind of convoluted asinary? Uh, not a... Well, for one, I kind of feel like I don't have a dog in this race because I think both companies involved are terrible. Right. Uh... So I'm like, I'm I'm just kind of glad to see them fighting. <laughs> uh, I I'm not a big fan of something. Uh, they they are creating kind of a false monopoly. They're attempting to create a vertical monopoly, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not a fan of that. But Epic, uh. Epic game, the Epic Game Store, and by extension, the Fortnite people are trying to do the same thing. There, there, there's no, there's no moral position to support here. They're, right. they're just Apple's doing the same thing as them in a slightly different way, and they don't like it because it personally doesn't benefit them. Right. So yeah, I, but I, Epic doesn't have like a very widely utilized phone network that people essentially rely on for this sort of thing. Apple essentially locks you out of doing stuff because they aren't able to bully around some other big company. And that can be yeah. really hurtful for the user. So I'd say this is just yet another reason not to use Apple products. I don't use any myself, and look, I get along just fine. And <laughs> while, while we're at it, you could also not uh, you could also not support Epic Game Store due to their connections to Tencent. So you yeah. don't, don't support either of them. They're both awful. Oh, right, everything's yeah. connected to Tencent by various degrees. <laughs> by like 40%. Yeah. Um, I'm a little more on the side of Epic because at least they make some cool shit sometimes. Not all the time. And, and I think I think they probably have the stronger legal argument. Yeah, it, it sounds like it, but at the same time, I'm not sure where it'll land because, uh, I, I don't know if it, because it, it kind of depends on whether or not you can monopolize on a single mobile phone platform, because, like, sure, they get controlling interest and, you know, force so much sales of iPhone apps to give them money, but... Android is like a viable competitor in this race and I feel like that's going to be one of the arguing factors against them is that oh you can go to Android and use their services too that's you, you know we're not the only right. smartphone but if they're doing the same the thing and it's a huge cost mm -hmm. to just switch phones especially one that can run fucking Fortnite yeah like ugh. so i i don't buy the argument that um I, I buy the monopoly argument because Apple would prefer, uh, because if you're making something proprietary to only your system, uh, if everyone's doing that, that com that it's just a bunch of vertical monopolies all the way down, mm -hmm. which is kind of a funny way of phrasing things, but. 
basically they're using the position in the market to muscle other people to essentially bend to their whims while also preventing more competition from arising. It's kind of like collusion, hmm. but not blatant. Right. But then again, we've been dealing with this in the console market forever. Yeah. It's just coming to a head now that uh, now that Brilliant. it's we're getting something that's kind of more of a mass media than video game consoles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, shall we move to our video game topic, or is there any last thoughts on this whole bullshit? VG topic! Alright. Let's go with that then. Uh, so the video game topic for today is all about broken or overpowered design philosophies, how to recognize them and prevent them. Um, so, Chris, this was uh, your topic choice, so why don't you explain your topic? So it seems like often in times in uh, video games, plus often in well-balanced ones, is... And, and this could be... This could go for tabletop uh, games as well. Uh, mm. There are... Sorry. There's... Uh, some complex system that gets built up, uh, but that complex system has a secret in it, uh, or a strategy, uh, that's trivial to do, and tends to overpower anything else, kind of defeating the point of a lot of those. And one of the things that comes most, uh, to mind would be... As as kind of a basic example would be the hearty uh, foods from Breath of the Wild being used to create hearty dishes. Mm -hmm. uh, that was definitely something I abused. <laughs> yeah. It's why interact, generally speaking, and, and Breath of the Wild is not a pure example here. Right. But generally speaking, why interact with the rest of the system? Mm-hmm. Well, the hearty foods were there to give you that boost, but the other bits of food items didn't erase your buffs. So if if you would if it was like, oh, the attack damage buff was just so much better than the others, then that would be an example of what you just said. But I don't think the hearty foods really nullify the other food types. To an extent, they did. If if you like specifically like because the way that i used hearty foods generally was that i wouldn't make them so that they buffed me a bunch of hearts because you know no. I, I i would make it so that it would give li literally i'd get any one hearty ingredient and put it in a pot and i'd use it mm -hmm. as a full heal and exactly yeah and because of that it's like you find you know as many of these things as you're looking for uh and you, you like I, I this was one of the things that I talked about uh, when everybody was all like complaining about the final boss just not being all that good and I'm like it was a fine final boss I don't think it was terrible but I think it was very breakable and it felt easy because of that because like in most of your Zelda games me. like in in the last in let's take Ocarina of Time for an example in that game you uh, could take um, four fairies into battle, theoretically, if you had maxed out yourself, right? And then, mm -hmm. so that's literally four extra lives of your full health of 20 hearts. So you got 80 hearts now, right? Now, first of all, in Breath of the Wild, you can max out your hearts up to 30, and then, like, you find, like, one grove full of uh, hardy mushrooms, and you can, like, make probably 10 of these buff foods. Now you have 300 hearts. You know, it's just... Yeah. <laughs> it, it plus Mifa's grace, so 330, you know. Uh, and by that time, you've probably healed enough times to recharge Mifa's grace again, maybe. You know, if, you, if you're really taking that much time to beat this boss. So it's like... I feel like just generally, like, the good gamers over-prepared for this game in the for this final boss and that was kind of the 
one of the big issues because I, I know I did. I was like going around looking for hardy stuff and I got some of the best uh, equipment and I grinded up all my armor. So I had like some of the best armor in the game and all these things. And um, yeah. I think I had like 30 hardy dishes when I went in there. Mm -hmm. Just as many as I could carry or whatever. Yeah. So it's like it's a, it's a very easily bustable thing. Yeah, and by no means is this meant to imply that uh, Breath of the Wild is a bad game. Mm -hmm. It's well known. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of a well-known thing you can do to trivialize a lot of uh, a lot of the things like damage taken. Yeah. And at that point, it almost felt to me like, why would I ever have any buff food? Right? Because... Yeah. You could just chug could, a hearty meal and be done. Yeah, because... all the other bullshit. If I have one hearty meal, that's all of my hearts, as opposed to a defense buff where, like, I'll take, like, even the best defense buffs, I think, only reduced it to, like, half damage. So it's like... Double your hearts if you happen to take that much damage in the, in the time limit. Yeah, in the five minutes or however long the the buff lasts. So it's like at that point it almost like why not? And then there's armor to kind of nullify a lot of the other effects that you can get from food. Like, you know, it was cool at first, you know, uh, making buff food like to survive in the cold areas and stuff like that. But after a certain point, it's like, oh, I've got all the armor for, you know, whatever. I, I just changed my clothes and I don't care. I don't need to carry that kind of buff food anymore. So can so. we think of, like, any other examples of that sort of system being cheesed? Or Yeah, that's what it is. It's just being cheesed. Mm -hmm. uh, the Elder Scrolls had many examples. None more prominent than I can think of of Daggerfall's Magic Absorb. Uh, glitch, uh, not not really a glitch, more as a kind of unintended side effect. Mm -hmm. And that you could build a class that let you absorb one hundred percent of magic at level at, one. At level one, yes. Oh my god! And then you could build an area of effect spell that could you would cast at short range that cast took pretty much all of your mana. And then you could just spam cast it running down the hallway, killing everything in sight, and always absorbing your own spell to... Oh my god. Yeah, to regain your own mana. Mm -hmm. So, the game was... Once you knew about that, the game was trivially broken at all. At least that's kind of a weird there thing. There was a similar thing in uh, Morrowind if you made a combined spell, because you could craft your own spells in that game, where you basically take two or three spell effects and turn them into one super spell and if you combine soul trap with uh any enhance uh attribute spell so like your enhance intellect enhance strength stuff like that then it would make it permanent so you could like just literally just keep casting this on yourself to raise your strength to literally it literally, as a character, if you level up, you max out any stat to 100. Um, and if you're doing this, like, you can instantly make any stat upwards of the 10,000s. It's just like, okay, now I one-shot everything. Um, I'm not sure if it's a glitch or if this was the intended effect. Like, uh, kind of like the scenario Chris was talking about with Daggerfall. It seems like it's... Um, programmed into the game purposefully but I can't guarantee that. I, I'm not really sure. I, don't know. I feel like Soul Trap is meant to be temporary. I know I did try some cheese strats like the absorption thing in Oblivion which is of course the fourth one and I did achieve it but I had to get like special gear later in the game. There's nothing I could do at the first level. Mm -hmm. And you definitely couldn't absorb your own spells and Soul Trap definitely wasn't permanent. Yeah. So I think they addressed all of those things, but in later releases, they just didn't have the testing infrastructure to get all those That's cheese possible, strategies yeah. worked out. But the hearty food in Breath of the Wild is an obvious strategy. 
whereas like those examples are more do you understand the system that's kind of true but another example from morrowind is that uh all buff foods stacked or, or all buff items stacked so like uh literally there's nice. a there's a guy uh he's basically a some sort of sub deity uh his name is vivek he's got a big town named after him and uh, I really hated his town, and I decided that because his town was set up so stupidly, I was just going to go murder him. Uh, it's like, worst revenge story ever. But I decided I'm going to go kill him, right? And um, I got talking to my brother Dan, was um, uh, also wanted to kill him for like some other reason that he was like, uh, just wanted to kill Vivek. And, and he played like this mage character and, and came in and and had this big crazy strategy and fought him for 45 minutes before he finally defeated him. He's like, yeah, I got him. And I, I came in to the room where he just kind of hangs out and I chugged 47 bottles of Sujama, which increase your strength and lower your intellect. And I just chugged 47 of these and I hit him with my sword and he died. <laughs> I was like, this is the best thing I ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> you came up with all this stupid strategy, and it is not as... <laughs> I hope he saw that, and his jaw just dropped. He did, he was there. He's like, this isn't gonna work, this is stupid. I, I had to take so much time to beat this guy, I'm like, glug, 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 sore! <laughs> one shot, he's just like, my god! <laughs> what the... <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> Once again, the drunk barbarian proves everyone else is a fool. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much how that works. He's got to love those stories. Uh, yeah, so one more example Chris was talking about uh, before we uh, got on the actual podcast was um, just uh, combos that you can do in uh, fighting games or the like, where it's like you can just do things that, uh, you know, repeatedly spam one combo or one move. It doesn't necessarily have to be a fighting game, but fighting games come to mind because that's kind of the... Especially, like, if you're not good at fighting games like me, that sometimes you'll just default to these kind of cheesy strats. Uh, what do you guys think about those? And I think most fighting games, on average, that stand, at least the ones that stand the test of time, are good at avoiding that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do want to go after... Uh, Super Smash Brothers Brawl for Meta Knight mm -hmm. as a character. Uh, where Meta Knight had four uh, save abilities mm -hmm. and was considered by far one of the mo most overpowered ca characters in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm thinking he's more of an example of that because his power was so well known. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but there are subtler examples of characters being considered the best character in fighting games, like Fox with Melee. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of... Uh, people arguing when Bayonetta was released as a DLC character for uh, Smash for Wii U that uh, she was like ridiculously overpowered um, so yeah I definitely get what you're saying uh, it's kind of funny because I thought actually of Soul Calibur 2 where I had a couple of characters that like if I just started the combo with like there was one combo with Talim that I could just it was almost impossible to break out of at any point. I'd just keep slamming you into the ground, and then, you know, I'd hit you with a downward move before you could possibly get up, and then uh, slam you down into the ground again. Um, and it was... Rinse and repeat. Yeah, it was absolutely retarded. Um, but uh, it was like you... I, I saw people get out of it, but it was never consistently... Uh, to the point where, like, most of the time, uh, I would be able to consistently just kill anybody with this strategy. Almost all the time, so. Um, 
Yeah, I don't really know what you can do to avoid that all that much. I mean, obviously, like, make a better game is the uh, basic answer that you would come to. But, uh, you know, I think all these games that we've talked about were good games, uh, despite having, you know, egregious uh, balance problems like this. Or, uh, you know, problems where... Uh, one combo was more exploitable than it should have been. Stuff like that. So, uh, where do you draw the line uh, and call it bad game design? Uh, What's your testing budget like? <laughs> I mean, that's an inter that that's an interesting point. In that, well, we are talking about Capcom like and Nintendo here, so probably high. In that, I think. The games we're talking about, you're right in that the games we're talking about here are, uh, they're all considered good games. Mm -hmm. And just because these things happen in the system, it doesn't mean that you've made a bad game. Just because one character is the strongest or because there's one system that uh, has... Uh, trivial kind of way out of it that can trivialize a lot of the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, the game doesn't stop the game from being fun necessarily, but it does tend to. It, it's subtler than that. It can sometimes those things can be more fun to have in the game, but a lot of times those things tend to make the gameplay worse. Mm -hmm. you're focused on doing something else that is less fun I'm gonna give you, you know, actually a... there's go ahead Nick pretty good example of Skyrim and alchemy specifically because <laughs> yeah. if you ever, you ever play Skyrim you just look at all these random ingredients and you're like oh this one lets me resist fire or this one lets me reinforces acrobatics and there's just so many like potion combinations that aren't oh, sure. they're not really useful compared to other shit like recharge magicka you know aren't really useful compared to make you hit harder right <laughs> yeah. so it's like this is a really those cool kind of in-depth system with a lot of thought like put into the, it but... like in every game those kind of conditional items are things that just sit in my inventory forever like in Pokemon games, like, every time I come across an X attack now or something, I'm just like, I'm not even going to use it. I just sell it immediately. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> nope. Don't, don't even care. <laughs> what does an X attack an do? An X attack just increases your attack ability. Uh, I'm just like, I never use that kind of thing. Because uh, it's, it's like a very conditional item that, like, in 90% of battles you won't need. Uh, and then, like, you'll save it until the end of the game for that one battle where you really, really need it, except, you know, then you'll be too afraid to use it, because what if a more important battle comes up later? Yeah, so yeah. That, that kind of thing. And uh, the same thing with, like, uh, resist fire potions or, or whatever, that kind of thing in uh, Elder Scrolls or, or any kind of game. It's like, if it's a conditional thing, I'll never... Or even in Breath of the Wild, I got resist fire potions and I never used them. I got resist electricity potions. I'm like, uh... I don't Those definitely care. come in handy very occasionally, yeah. but they only ever come up if you're playing on like some kind of hard mode where you can't just go through it without the potions. Because if you can just get through it without them, you're just going to forget about them. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be pouring over your inventory like, all right, this is tough. What do I use? I, I had a funny only story in Breath up. of the Wild, actually. The first time I was playing, um, where I was going um, in... Uh, when you're first going to the Goron town and you're going up to the top of the mountain and it's so hot that you burst into flames and uh, I like at the bottom of the mountain there's a guy that sells you like one uh, potion uh, for resist fire and I and I drank it and I tried to get Let to the go. top and it, it ran out before I was actually at Goron City and I was like oh just god what do I do chow down and, on food yeah, until I, you make it I, 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 I did I was just eating food eating food until I, I finally got to the top there and I was just like <laughs> ran into the shop and I was like please tell just me you have these peppers. fire Pokemon or fire Pokemon 
<laughs> do you have fire Pokemon? Right. No, but Please we have fire resistance have armor. Fire resistance potions. That'll and, do. Yeah, and they, and they had the armor there, obviously. So I bought the armor right away. I was like, put this on. I was like, I could only afford the helmet, but just the helmet was enough. So I just bought the helmet, and I, I'm just walking around with this hat and totally mismatched clothes. I'm just like, I'm not on fire anymore. It's glorious. This hat that's clearly just made out of metal and would be hot as freaking balls. Yeah, no, it's helping no. me out, <laughs> especially since I ate all of those spicy pepper dishes that I never would have used otherwise. <laughs> right. I don't care that you give me heat resist. I just need that two hearts. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, but I'm going to give you guys an example of a mechanic that is totally bustable and makes the game really trivial that I think is a good addition. This is in Kirby Air Ride. Basically, after you've beat pretty much all the game's contents uh you can unlock um dragoon and hydra are these two legendary machines which in the game are basically faster better cars than any car that you could possibly get ever uh it's like these two it's like as soon as you unlock them there's no reason to ever not drive them so but at the same time like before you get them like you've played through the game like all of the game's yeah. contents so many times that it's like who even cares at that point it's like okay we can give you some retarded overpowered thing why the hell yeah not? at that point i mean you've won the game it's just here's a toy to play with. <laughs> yeah pretty much it doesn't cheese the game it's just mm -hmm. here's a toy it's a bragging rights reward basically mm -hmm. yeah you're just mad because i got one and you didn't <laughs> and then you show your friends, and you're like, look at this car I got. And they're like, no way, dude, it's so fast. Mm -hmm. I kind of miss it, because I was uh, going through Kirby Air Ride again uh, a few weeks ago. I, I picked it up, and I was playing it with my kids and stuff, and it's still super fun, but I was kind of, like, missing that I... Because at some point, my memory card got corrupted, so I no longer have... Uh, all my old stuff from Kirby Air Ride. So I've got like the basic three cars that you start with or something. So I'm going through it again. Oh. So eventually I'll get back to get it again. Um, anything else on this uh, kind of subject? Don't give your players items in D&D. &D. Or games that flat out double the damage that they do. And if you have to give them items that double the damage for whatever reason, do not let them stack. <laughs> and does this transition us into our table topic? It does. So our table topic uh, for the week is actually how much gold is too much and uh <laughs> and i think there's a definitive answer yeah, to this question. 87 million <laughs> in gold. order to kind of go 87 along with million that, is too uh, much. how much do you guys supplement gold with um treasure and stuff because the way i dm i do mostly treasure i'm just like here's a weird magic item or a useful like uh but plus two brats or why not? You know, some random crap like that, like in every dungeon. Crap. I put a handful of. Whoa. This is crap. <laughs> you know, um, I put like I like to put a lot of weird joke magic items in too, like the ring of sporadic healing, which I stole from Kingdom of Loathing, which is like every round you roll a d4, and uh, if you roll a four, then you regain two hit points or something. Some dumb thing like that. I like putting in weird shit like that. Um, and, uh, is but it yeah. Cursed? No. It, uh, is it useful? No. <laughs> right. It's just kind of there. Yeah. It's like, okay, so I automatically stabilize statistically every four rounds. Yay. <laughs> hey, that can be a lifesaver. It could be. Uh, I think it was at some point. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, and I, I mostly like divvy up treasure to a point where I actually got, um, I was, uh, several sessions into a campaign one time and, uh, all the players were like, man, I don't have any gold. We haven't found gold in any of these dungeons in like, <laughs> like it's, it's probably four or five sessions in we've done like three or four dungeons, something like that. And, and I right. just, the way that I've DM'd, I have not even considered putting gold. In just my like, I'm just like, 
Oh, oh yeah, they need gold. <laughs> you don't and so need like they get gold. to the inn and they're like, none of us have any money. What should we do in the That like, actually somebody, happened like... in a fourth edition game as well. <laughs> and the only reason that doesn't happen in the game in Chris plays is because like extracting monetary value worth of treasure from the dungeon is like the objective. Mm-hmm. But there is still too much and too little and that sort of stuff. I think in a traditional game a lot not in Chris's game. Uh, the amount of gold you want to put in, you don't want to trivialize gold itself. You want it to feel like it has value. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they can use gold to go to shops and do shopping sprees, but you also have to make sure that there's things they can do with the gold. So even in a system that doesn't use gold as XP, making them hunger for gold and be like, man, we need gold so we can get the thing, do the stuff, mm-hmm. like that can add a whole new element of gameplay, which can be really fun to engage with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting. So make sure way. there's like awesome potions in the potion shop that they can buy that let them do some crazy thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a dumb example. I'm a little lazy on that kind of thing too, because like whenever they get to a shop, I'm like, uh, open up the arms and equipment guide. They have uh, this page. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm I think just what like, you can do whatever. Is... I'm I'm so lax with my games. I'm just like, you know, if you have the gold to make a magic item, then what the fuck ever. Especially since half the time in my games, somebody's being a cap- power gamey item creator. So hello. <laughs> yeah, Chris. <laughs> hello. <laughs> uh, so it's hey, like man. at that point, like, why bother like even paying attention to the items they have a lot of times, unless they're doing something really stupid cheesy. But well, uh. Are they producing stuff out of nothing? Is there any limit to that production of stuff out of nothing? Why, why does money have no value in a world that values money? Mm-hmm. Why does money even exist if there's people who don't need to care about it? Is it just something peasants use? <laughs> yes. They're just like, I yearn for an entire silver piece. I've never seen one in my entire life. And you're just like, I got buckets of gold. You want to be slapped in the face with one? Yeah, but then it's like, why would you even bother picking up the gold at that point? Right. And that's the other side of it. You also don't want to flood your players with so much stuff. You don't want to be like, Ugh, I don't want to think about this as a DM. And you just throw 87 million gold at your players and suddenly they can afford everything under the sun. Mm-hmm. So, but on the whole, like making sure there's like things available in markets that they might want. You can do the like hard work thing that gives several examples. Or you could just be like, all right. How big is the market you're currently in? Okay. And then ask them, all right, what are you looking for? And then you can kind of wing it from there. Like if someone's like, I want a cool new sword. And you're like, great. Here's a plus four with this effect that I just came up with. Mm-hmm. Or if someone's like, I want potions that make my dick bigger. And you're like, well, you find that. <laughs> because this don't even cost lot. that much. <laughs> don't even cost that much. Because <laughs> that doesn't affect the gameplay in any way. Ah, uh, be careful with that. Your players might drown the world in bleach. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, if an item is cheap enough, and they're like, I'm going to buy 500 flasks of that, you can say, like, they don't have 500 flasks. They have 10. Right? That's something I find funny, is uh, the uh, item uh, choosing and stuff when you're at super high levels in like some sort of power gaming campaign where it's like okay yeah you have infinite access to everything because you can travel the world and and uh, uh one of my characters that we were doing for some sort of one shot like one of my strategies was i had like five portable holes that were just each one was filled with um like 400 flasks of alchemist fire or something <laughs> and so i'd just be like Okay, we fly over the dragon, and I open the portable hole, and 500 flasks fall out, and he takes 500d6 damage, and has to save versus 500 splash damage. I would rule that one a little bit differently, <laughs> just because Alchemist Fire doesn't isn't cumulative like explosives, but yeah, <laughs> same concept remains. Mm. Well, the area of the portable hole was smaller than the area of the dragon, so in theory, every single flask would have fallen on top of the dragon. Right? So each effect is individual. But I mean, you could have filled it with any other item, and your point would still be 
fine. True. It's like, I fill it with grenades! You're like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, my... I think we've done that exact thing before. <laughs> my brother... Yep, and that's why explosive rune coins, there's a limit to how many of those you can have at once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> per caster. Because otherwise, why isn't the NPC world doing the same stupid thing? Just, I have this bag full of explosive rune coins and I don't like you, so I'm just going to scoop out a couple and throw them at you. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. You just got Beirutted. <laughs> Too soon? Maybe. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe a little too soon. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember even one time at a uh, low-level campaign, like, my brother Tim uh, just looked at how much Tim. money he had, and um, he's like, okay, I'm going to buy this and this and this, and we're like, okay, we start the game, it's like level one campaign, and we're just, like, going through normal, and we get to the boss, and Tim's like, I'm going to use my special box that I bought, and we're just like, what? And he's like, I bought a box and 12 daggers, and he just opens the box and chucks it. <laughs> so it's like, wait, what? <laughs> and we, we, like we made up, I don't remember who was DMing even, but they made up some sort of system to roll and he's just like, rolls it straight up. He's just like, all right. And he like one shot the boss by throwing a box full of daggers at him. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, that seems unwieldy. So you get like a minus four on every one and it's no, he's just like rolling like nuts. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> This should well, I not mean, be feasible. If he dodges one dagger, he probably dodges all of them. Right. But he didn't dodge any of them, I don't think. I mean, <laughs> if it was, like, an explosive that flung daggers everywhere, you know, different story. Mm -hmm. And that's why you don't give your characters gunpowder at the early levels. <laughs> right. <laughs> what are you talking about? Gunpowder at the early levels is a great way to sp mm -hmm. spice things up and maybe cause a few TPKs. Mm-hmm. And it's a great way to let your DM let throw... Never mind. There, there was marshmallows in Chris's face due to gunpowder-related reasons. Because nice. uh, he put dynamite in his game, and I'm like, wow, dynamite's fucking great. As long as I don't drop it on myself. Hee <laughs> <laughs> hee. We've, uh... You, you've had that experience before. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, that was a bad day. So yeah, kids, if you're going to fight with dynamite, have someone else carry your backup supply. <laughs> or you will all one. die. Rule number two, don't... This, this is gunpowder, so don't get it wet. <laughs> Keep your powder dry. I act like I know things about powder. Yep. Like chowder? Ooh. But, so the 86 million gold... So, uh, 87 million gold thing is uh, called Chris does not understand multiplication when built, when designing games sometimes. <laughs> Which isn't strictly true, but it's true enough for our speech. And uh, So uh, if you make a uh, metal that is worth 100 times the price of gold mm -hmm. and uh, your players ambush an army wearing full plate of this metal <laughs> uh, and they manage to get most of it off of these uh, mercenaries they're going to have way too much money mm -hmm. I'll think of that uh, the next time I have my guys wearing platinum armor <laughs> we had enough money after that and enough finesse that we ended a two-year campaign in the second half of that session simply by buying everything we needed from the evil empress that who we suddenly became on good terms with because money. <laughs> that campaign was six years. That was a six-year can. Oh my god. Yeah. Point remains. <laughs> he gave us 87 million gold. We're like, what the fuck? And I'm like, alright, we're ending this tonight. <laughs> And we used that money to develop weapons that flew at nearly the speed of light to do immense kinetic damage. More than one of them. And hyper-advanced AIs to pilot them. Like, we just bankrolled the finish line. It was silly. And glorious. 
Although I am happy with the way that game ended. So, maybe not too much gold? No, it was too much gold. It, it was too much gold. The game ended because it was so much gold. <laughs> yeah. Everything else we did paled in, like, value compared to that. Also, I'm not sure how those guys didn't get them, their asses killed for pure money by someone else previously. You're right. That's the only real issue with that. It's like, how did they have so much money and not attract all of the dragons on the planet? Because dragons smell wealth, right? That, that's how that works? Probably. Dragons... Well, the dragons on the island were attracted by demons, but that's a story for another time. Too bad I killed them all before finding that out. All right. Tasty, tasty dragons. Is there uh, anything else we want to say about how much is too much gold? Uh, I'll tell you how much is too little. How much is too little? Actually, that's another kind of a well, flip side uh, we didn't really talk about. I, I mean, Let's I guess see. I sort of did because I was like, you know, I gave them no gold for six sessions or something. And then That's one of them little. mentioned it and I was like, oh, yeah, gold. If your players can't go shopping, you're not giving them enough gold. Mm -hmm. Like some people like to shop and go to the mall and try on new clothes slash gear. Some people like to try new fancy drugs. They like to drink new drinks. They like to carouse, throw parties, give adventurers money to do adventurous things with. If they can't do those things, you're not giving out enough gold. And it's not even giving out the gold is the thing. It's making sure it's available for them to acquire. Right. Which I kind of did because I put in, like, the magic items and stuff, but then they kept the magic items and stuff. They didn't sell even any of the like, silly-ass... Because they items. had nothing to use the gold on. See? It has, you have to have a sink. You have to have a sink to put it in, you have to have stuff to fill the sink, and you have to have some way to drain the sink. Mm -hmm. Th Three-part system. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make some shields. Nice. Are they gonna be, like, Sh the Hylian shield? Uh, no, they're not. They're not that good. Not that cool. They only use one and get a metal. I have a master sword right here. Cool. It's very small. And if you ever want to, oh god, I have a bigger master sword. If you ever want to experience else. how much gold is too little gold, just get the Caverns of Thracia in OD and D module, mm. and you'll experience how much gold is too little gold. It's an it's an AD and D module. AD and D. Yeah. Mm. Yuck. But yes. That was at the time when they were, when people started thinking, hmm, the OD and D treasure charts are too generous. Maybe maybe if we made them actively worse. Yeah, when when you go into a dungeon and it's lethal enough that it'll kill pretty much everyone unless you're going in with like three to four or third and fourth level characters and then the treasures handed out isn't even enough to level people from one to two. Mm. Like, there's no point in going to that dungeon. You're like, this tastes like death. Hmm. You might find a plus one magic item here or there and then get two of your levels drained through a ten foot pole by a conniving door. Like you do. That, that happened to me. I was that person. I that was door made me very me. mad. <laughs> I was going to say, you were that person, or were you the door? <laughs> I was the person so unlucky enough to have my level sucked out through the door. Now that's a door. It was sad, because I was trying to protect him during I'll that, but it just sucked Jim out his Dorison. levels through a straw. That, uh... I was not very happy about that. I, I can tell you that. It was some bullshit. It was two levels. Two whole levels in a game that we were gold-starved. In a game that relies on gold to level up. Do not starve your players of gold when you need big need gold to level up. Yeah, It'll be sad, Panda. I've never really done that kind of a thing as a DM uh, either, so I guess, you know, that, that doesn't apply to me as much, because I'm like, yeah, you level up regardless of your gold. And then I realize I have a party of level 5 players that are like, we can't stay at the end. <laughs> <laughs> We're too broke. 
Except for that guy who hoarded all the gold. That guy was probably. I'd say We're let's go camping, but no, none of us owns a bedroll. So he's cutting the innkeeper and let him stay. Let him stay in the bed. He's like, shit, fine, whatever. I don't want any trouble. Why don't you guys have any gold, huh? We have all these magic items, though. Huh. All right. Well, is that the end of that? Could be. Should be. All right. Well, then I guess thank you for joining us on a drink to the past once again. Uh, my name is Sean Michael Patrick Thompson, of course, your wonderful-ish host. Um, and uh, we were joined today by my glorious co-host, Chris. Hi, I'm Chris, Screeches and with Terror, uh, Audet. As well as the glorious-ish Nick. Accidentally dropping by like he does. Like he's got it wasn't an accident this week, it was fully intentional. <laughs> Just nobody tells me about it. What? <laughs> Otherwise, I would have like you know waited for I... you and been like, "Hey, let's you know start the podcast together instead of having a random Nick drop." But would I Although, be Nick that... if I showed up right. scheduled? That is true. It's like the the randomness of you popping in and out of the podcast does have its particular charm. I'm like, kind of dig charm. that. I'm sure. Charming. Yeah. <laughs> Bless you. Oh, been one up. I'm very charming. Chris, very charming Audit. <laughs> Chris, very charming Audit. All right, you like can catch us, more. of course, on YouTube and Podbean and uh, Apple Podcasts. So um, uh, if, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, ignore all the stuff we said bad about Apple at the start of the podcast. Don't ignore it. You're, you're listening on a devil device. Yeah, go over to Podbean. <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> if you go to YouTube, you can watch Chris comply with your Minecraft. master's. <laughs> for fear choose, of retribution choose a slightly different cor corporate overlord right yeah that's all we're asking let's see yeah choose a good corporate overlord like um I don't know who's a or just play Guinness. overlord Guinness they're, they're a good corporate overlord to follow uh do we plug do we want to plug do anything like that? I thought about it, Don't and then we the kept getting interrupted by all the weird whatever we've been talking about. So <laughs> you can find me on two guys playing Zelda dot com, uh, as well as at Twitter at spamomano spam, um, and uh, yeah, check me out. I write opinion articles and junk. They're pretty cool. Um, and of course, Chris and Nick are the amazing, fantabulous authors of stuff. Hi, I'm Chris, Terrified Screeching, or Very Charming. It, it doesn't really matter to me. Audet. <laughs> uh, same thing, you really. can find my an adventure I wrote called House of Flowers on Drive-Thru RPG, uh, and a rule system I co-wrote with Nick here called Five Cataclysms Core Rules Beta Edition. You can pick either of those up for pay what you want, and if you like them, feel free to drop us a few dollars. Nick is here, so you can plug, plug yourself. See, people are starting to buy my stuff, so I feel like I need to actually write new content. But you can find me on Drive-Thru RPG. Just type in five cataclysms, and you can get some good old-school renaissance D&D content. I highly recommend uh, Descent into Madness, First Steps. Do you like a fun house that has all sorts of crazy rooms with crazy things, but still has some internal consistency? Then buy that. Who wants internal consistency? It's it's good. I, I plug it on the episode. Nick does not join, so it's true he does. Oh. All right. Now with the final wrap up segment of the podcast, where we uh, just talk about weird stuff or whatever we happen to be talking about until uh, somebody says something really awkward and I cut the podcast off. You know, I'm pretty sure this has been one of the shortest podcasts we've had in quite a long time. Yes, it has. Um, it doesn't help that we've had guests the last several weeks, so we've been running like two hours. Um, yeah. Which I like having the guests, but at the end of the night, sometimes it's like, ah, I had to drink too much beer. Now I have to post the podcast on stuff, but I drank too much beer. <laughs> sure. 
Sean, you didn't say I'd drink to that a single time. God. I'm pretty sure that means we have to drink. Yeah, I'm drinking. We got the drink card, too. We didn't, like, make any mistakes, so I didn't have to make fun of myself and tell us to drink. Yeah. Weird. (laughs) (laughs) Nick's laughing at you. I could show you my hole. Your hole? (laughs) Yeah. It's a big hole. In a really awkward location. Well, your webcam's not broadcasting, but, uh... Oh. Oh, you mean a hole on Minecraft? (laughs) Or does he? TP accept? It's mostly weird because of where my hole is located. It's not where you think. It's in the spawn town. What the hell? Town. Center. Land. Doohickey? Can, can I even mine things here? Nope. Oh. It's not allowed. Steal his shit, Chris. Steal it. Mine it up. I want. I see all this. Uh, see all this iron here. Don't you I have an iron get... generator? Oh wait, no, you don't, because it's the day cycle. No, it's broken. You can buy it from my shop, Sean. You should play Minecraft. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> I play too much other shit to play Minecraft. It's true. Everyone plays too much other shit to play other shit. Yeah. It's like, look at all these cool games. I'm stuck playing three. It's all I have time for. Right. Is it? But I switch out which three it is, so it, it kind of works. Yep. Grand one of mine is always Minecraft, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm weird like that. I don't usually have a go-to game. Like, I replay Ocarina of Time, like, once a year. But other than that, I, like... Jesus. I'm just like you must be a free mind. spirit. So free. I know. I've always liked open-ended games. Ever since I was a kid, I was like, "What? I could play the game forever." It wasn't always mm-hmm. about new experiences. It's kind of like I don't know. You ever watch like ants build a colony? Not for very long. I, I know what you're talking about. I like the uh, I like the aluminum casts of those. Mm-hmm. Or they literally murder that entire colony to preserve it. <laughs> yeah, I don't right. know. I like. You just know there's ant bodies in I there. I get the idea, and but it's to some extent it's like if there's not really an end game, then I'm just like, what? What am I striving for here? But in in Minecraft specifically, like everything you do, especially if you do it in one world like my crazy ass, it's just this cumulative thing, and you can like look at your past achievements constantly and they look good <laughs> so i'm kind of i'm kind of with sean here that's why life ends awkwardly and painfully without much warning